Amazon workers are at warehouse in New York are voting on whether to form a union. A similar ballot recently concluded at an Amazon site in Alabama. They are amongst a growing number of workplaces aiming to unionize across the U.S. Labor experts say the trend is being driven by essential working uh, workers facing tough working conditions triggered by the pandemic. Sarah Walton reports. Two years ago, Chris Smalls lost his job at a Staten Island Amazon warehouse for protesting what he felt were unsafe working conditions during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now he's leading the efforts to unionize his former workplace. The pandemic really opened up the eyes of essential workers. Um, we realized our value is worth a lot more and um, uh, we want to have uh, job security, longer breaks, uh, better medical leave options, more paid time off. Uh, making everybody a shareholder again. Um, just a few of the things that we can do. Amazon says it's finding ways to improve conditions and that unions make it harder to enact change. But Chris represents a new, younger generation of union supporters that have prompted workplaces to organize across the U.S. Following the unionization of three Starbucks outlets in Buffalo, New York, at least 72 more stores are now hoping to do the same. The New York City branch of outdoor clothing firm REI unionized earlier this month, as did tech workers at the New York Times. Analysts say the trend is being driven by what is, for employers, a perfect storm of conditions. You have a labor market uh, where people aren't concerned about losing their jobs particularly anymore. You have a, a shortage of labor. You have decades of growing income inequality. Politically, you all of a sudden have an administration in Washington that is pro-union and making it easier and safer to organize a union. Historically, U.S. employers have been amongst the most anti-union in the world. Union membership in the country has fallen steadily since the 1970s and is now down to around 10%. But a Gallup poll last year suggested public support for unions is at its highest rate for six decades. However, it's too soon to tell if this is the start of a long-term trend. This wave is going to continue in Starbucks. It is spreading to other uh, retail. It's going to spread potentially to other low-wage workers. Whether this is the beginning of the revitalization of the labor movement, I don't think anybody can say for sure. But the situation is, is much more positive in terms of the conditions that could lead to a revitalization. Staff at the Amazon site in Staten Island have until Wednesday to vote to unionize, although the result of the ballot may take some time to be tallied. Chris Small says even if they succeed, they'll then face an uphill battle to secure a union contract with their employer. Sarah Walton, CGTN, New York.